Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm going to answer a question that we get asked quite a lot at Doulos, namely, what's the difference between System C and System Verilog? Well, System C is used primarily as a modelling language, particularly for virtual platform modelling, whereas System Verilog is used mainly for digital hardware verification. I'm going to dive down into both System C and System Verilog and describe each of them in a little more detail for you. There are some great reasons for using System C. System C has an open source proof of concept simulator that only requires a C++ compiler to run. And that makes it very flexible with respect to platforms and licensing. It means that you can run a System C model if you simply have a C++ compiler available. EDA tool vendors are then able to add further value to System C by implementing smart features within their tools. System C is also a robust and mature IEEE standard that's been in existence for several years now. And because it's just C++, it supports very easy integration with almost any software product or modelling product. System C also, because it's based on C++, gives software engineers and system engineers very easy access to EDA technology and models that they might not otherwise have. System C is usually used for transaction level modelling. Transaction level modelling you can think of as an abstraction level that's above register transfer level. At register transfer level all communication is done by pin wiggling, so in order for two register transfer level blocks to communicate you need typically to have an event on each individual signal connecting those two blocks together and lots of events adds up to slow simulation. Contrast that with a transaction level model. Communication between blocks in a transaction level model is achieved using simple function calls and replacing lots of pin wiggling with single function calls gives a dramatic speed up in simulation. Somewhere between 100x and 10,000x is typical and that's worth having. The usual use case for transaction level modelling these days is building virtual platform models of complex system on chips. These are systems that would typically include multiple processor cores, multiple software stacks, multiple buses and bridges between those buses, and also many, many digital and analog hardware IP blocks that all have to be integrated together. And the challenge is to obtain models for all of these various bits of IP in such a way that they can work in a fast, efficient simulation environment. And that's what transaction level modeling in System C enables. So transaction level models very often start life being created by um, system architects or people interested in performance modelling in order to build fast executable models of an SOC. Those same models can then be handed off to software development groups and can be used to develop application software and firmware because they're fast enough and available early enough to enable that to happen. The very same models can then be handed down to hardware verification groups where they can be used within an HDL test bench as a golden model, a reference model of the design under test. So I've said a few words about System C. Let's now explore System Verilog in just a little bit more detail. System Verilog has been touted as the world's first HDVL or hardware design and verification language. You can also think of it as Son of Verilog the latest in the Verilog heritage. System Verilog has features for RTL design, for assertions, and in particular for verification. So I'll explore each of those areas now. For design, System Verilog offers a number of significant RTL improvements. It offers a very concise coding style, enabling you to capture RTL code in a very straightforward way, and also offers synthesis-aware syntax so that the HDL coding can better re reflect your design intent. System Verilog also offers interesting features for parameterization and generate, which match many of the features that VHDL users have enjoyed for many years now, and even go beyond what VHDL offers in those areas. On the assertions side, there's a specific subset of System Verilog known as SVA for System Verilog assertions. And for verification, System Verilog offers a whole raft of language improvements. It's got a new set of programming language features which are based on C. So there are C-like data types and C-like statements. 
So if you're familiar with the control structures and the data types in C, you'll get home with System Verilog. System Verilog offers a variety of dedicated test bench features so that you can express your test bench intent very explicitly in System Verilog. It also has a complete object-oriented programming language with its own flavour of class, similar to classes in C++ and Java. And System Verilog has a number of features to support constrained random verification, and those features build on the classes in System Verilog. Finally, System Verilog has a really cool feature, which is the DPI, or um, Direct Programming Language Interface. The DPI is a very lightweight interface that enables you to call C functions from System Verilog and call System Verilog functions from, and tasks from C, and that's very convenient. Let's dive down into constrained random verification in a little bit more detail, because this is arguably the number one reason why our customers are making use of System Verilog today. Constrained random verification involves exercising a design under test using random test vectors. And you need to do three particular things to make random stimulus useful and tractable. The first thing is to automatically check the results of simulation. It's no good eyeballing waveforms if your simulation stimulus is random. And of course, System Verilog enables that with SVA, System Verilog Assertions. The second thing that you need to do is to answer the question, are we done? And that's done using a set of features for collecting functional coverage. So functional coverage provides a measure of how much simulation has been performed. Then finally, with random stimulus, those random vectors need to be directed in order to explore corner cases in the design, and that's done using a set of constraint features in System Verilog. Putting all this together, we see our customers making increased use of mixed language environments. In fact, using multiple languages on design projects is pretty much the norm now for the most complex designs. So hardware designs are still done largely in VHDL or Verilog, so dedicated hardware design groups make use of VHDL and Verilog for capturing the RTL code. Test benches may also be VHDL and Verilog, or they might make use of one of a number of more specialised test bench languages, and System Verilog is a great example of that. If System C is used, it's typically used to bring in a golden reference model. So a transaction level model of the design under test might have been created earlier on in the design flow, may be used for software development, and can then be brought into the hardware test bench as a golden reference model. So System C is used for modelling, particularly in the context of de software development and architectural exploration. System Verilog is used for building smart constrained random test benches. And LTL coding is typically done in good old fashioned VHDL or Verilog. Well, if you found this useful, Dulos are a training company. We specialise in providing training in System C, System Verilog, VHDL, Verilog, and a whole range of other EDA language standards. If you'd like more information, do go browse our website, www.dulos.com, where you'll find lots of interesting resources.